in a nitration reaction of benzene or another aromatic, nitric acid is combined with sulfuric acid to generate the active electrophile, which is the nitronium cation. And what we end up with is a nitro group linked to the benzene ring in the product where there was an H before. So just to touch on byproducts first, the byproducts of this reaction are H3O+, HSO4-, and a molecule of H2O, which is derived from the generation of the active electrophile, as we'll see when we dig into that mechanism shortly. And again, this is based on the idea that H2SO4 is going to come in an aqueous solution, nitric acid as well, in fact. <laughs> and so water can be used as a base, and this is where H3O+, plus comes from as a byproduct in the mechanism. So what is the active electrophile and how is it generated? This is typically the first question we ask in thinking about this reaction mechanistically. It's kind of interesting too, right? Because we've got two acids in here. We've got nitric acid and sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid, as it turns out, is quite a bit stronger than nitric acid. And it's so much stronger than nitric acid that to some extent, to a small extent, it can actually protonate nitric acid. And while most of the protonation actually happens on the formerly negative oxygen atom that shows up in the NO2 group, to some extent, protonation can occur on the OH oxygen in nitric acid, which is right here. And that would involve electron flow like this and would generate this disturbing, disturbing reactive intermediate, disturbing because it has two positive charges adjacent to each other, positive charge on N in the nitro group built into nitric acid and positive charge on this O that we just protonated. So that's actually a little bit horrifying. That's a horribly unstable species, but it can immediately fall apart through a beta elimination step, through beta elimination type electron flow like this to lose a molecule of water and produce a cation NO2 plus. And this NO2 plus species is the active electrophile in nitration reactions of aromatics. It's called the nitronium cation. The nitronium cation is profoundly, profoundly electrophilic at nitrogen, and it can be the active electrophile E plus in a reaction with an aromatic ring. And so the first step, as we've seen many times already, is coordination of the benzene ring to the electrophilic nitrogen through an A sub E elementary step. And here we might think of this as A sub E from the perspective of the aromatic ring, but nucleophilic addition to the polarized NO pi bond from the nitronium cations perspective. However you think about it, it is formation of a CN bond at the aromatic ring. And the resulting intermediate is, as we've seen previously, an arrhenium ion. Now there's positive charge delocalized around this ring in a single saturated carbon right there. Because this step has destroyed aromaticity, it's heavily, heavily, heavily uphill, very inorganic to get up to the arrhenium intermediate too. And to restore aromaticity, well, we need to deprotonate at this position, deprotonate that hydrogen linked to the saturated carbon. And water is probably the best candidate base to do this under these reaction conditions. That's going to produce the nitrobenzene product, in this case, nitroarene, more generally, right here, as well as H3O plus that we just generated, and HSO4 minus, which was generated up here in the generation of the nitronium cation. Notice also that we lost a molecule of water. That's where this water comes from in the byproducts. And on the reaction coordinate diagram, as we've seen, this proton transfer step is going to be heavily downhill since aromaticity is restored. So this reaction is used to install the nitro group, which is a fantastic electron withdrawing group. It's useful in that respect. It's also useful for installing amino groups, NH2. It's possible to convert the nitro group, which is NO2, through a reduction process, which I'm just going to abbreviate with H in brackets, into an NH2 group. This changes the properties of the substituent as an electron donating and withdrawing group, right? We've gone from profoundly withdrawing to profoundly donating. And this has interesting effects on subsequent reactions of the aromatic ring that we'll explore a little bit later.